it comes to health care, it seems that more information, the better, but that's not always the case. I have with me now Donald Kemper. He's the CEO of HealthWise, and you say that information therapy is really important, just as important as any other type of medicine, but we don't always get the right amount. That's right, and information therapy is really a new way to get information to patients. But before we really asked people to go pull the information from books or from the Internet, with information therapy, we're pushing the information to the right person at the right time that's really part of the delivery of care. Okay. Is there confusion, however? Uh, do people maybe get too much information and really don't apply it the right way? Well, there's the risk of confusion when people go find their own information. We certainly encourage them to do that, but they can often find information that's not right. Uh, when it's provided for them, really prescribed to them, just as you would prescribe a medication, it's usually in the right dose and at the right time just for the decisions that they're facing and the actions that they might be able to take with better information. Tell me about HealthWise. What does this company do? Okay. HealthWise develops and distributes consumer health information and tools. We're not-for-profit, and we've had a mission since 1975 to help people make better health decisions. Fairly simple thing. So we develop information and decision support tools for patients, and we license them to most of the big health websites and health insurance plans and uh, disease management companies around the country. Do you have to apply for a membership or sign up online to get this information, pay for it? Uh, generally, it's available free, uh, either from a hospital or a clinic or from a health plan etc. In some cases, the health plan requires a membership, you know, their own members to join, but you can get our information at hundreds of different websites. And how, who compiles the information? Who writes it? And, and how do we know that that's really the best kind of info that people should be getting? Right. Well, it's a good question, and we have, uh, that is what our competence really is around. We have 220 people, uh, including uh, a core of primary care physicians, but then really the core is the writers. So we have excellent consumer-focused writers that use plain language to translate the information so that everybody can understand it. And then we have physicians on staff that coordinate that. And then we have a panel of some 250 medical specialists around the country and really around the world that validate and confirm and keep us up to date with all the information. And who is your most prominent customer? Someone who is very web savvy and really younger than maybe somebody who would really need this kind of information but isn't as comfortable receiving it? We think of our information as right for everybody. So, so we're really writing it so that even those with relatively low uh, health literacy can understand the basics that they want and then it's layered so that people can go deeper, as deep as they wish to go, regarding the complexity of health care. Okay. Donald well, Kemper, go ahead. Sorry, sorry. Uh, you, had a, you had something else to add? Well, um, you know, information therapy has been our big run for the last 10 years. And we're also now looking at something new, uh, which I think goes along with the Accountable Care Organization. So we're thinking that there needs to be an accountable patient in the picture as well. So trying to take the partnership between the doctor and the patient and now give some expectations for what the patient should be contributing to that partnership. Um, it's, it's information therapy pushes information to the patient. With the accountable patient, there is a patient response that brings that information back into the clinical record and strengthens the partnership in that way. Okay, right. Donald Kemper, thank you so much. My pleasure. I'm Mabel Jong from the World Healthcare Congress in Washington, D.C.